before we get going, favourite cover of Let It Go? It's got to be that Japanese heavy metal cover because it's fucking brilliant and you're going to put a clip in right now. Let It Go is a song so stubbornly catchy, I'm going to hazard a guess and say that a couple of people watching this video right now had to listen to it on repeat for several weeks straight as a direct result of a family member absolutely loving the film. In addition to selling like 10 million copies, the song is also notable for being so good it basically changed the entire plot of the film Frozen. What was the original plot of Frozen? It was a more direct retelling of the Snow Queen, which people who don't know is the fairy tale Frozen is loosely based upon. And as a result of this, Elsa was originally supposed to be the villain of the entire story. And there's early concept art showing her as a villain and it's fucking awesome. It's not like the Elsa we got, but it's a cool character design nonetheless. Well, I can vaguely see Elsa in that design, but I don't think there's enough there for me to have been able to recognise it without being told. Yeah, if I'd have not told you that this is early concept art of Elsa, like people at home, you wouldn't have known it was Elsa, I'm going to guess. Unless like, you thought it was Elsa's punk phase when she was in high school, but yeah, that just goes to show how dramatically the tone of the film shifted from when it was first conceptualised to like the final product we got to see. <gasps> Never underestimate the power of snow. And ice. So in the original draft, Elsa was the villain. Yes, and Let It Go was supposed to be her villainous theme song, and the people who wrote it, um, Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez, were given a single line of direction from Disney about how that song should sound. Do you want to guess what that was? Badass. That was the only direction they got on how Elsa's theme song was supposed to sound. Badass. Like, can you imagine like some like stuffy Disney suited executive just going up to these songwriters going? Okay, we've got a film coming out, like, we want it to make a billion dollars. Um, you're writing the theme song for, like, you know, the title villain. Okay, like, you know, the titular Snow Queen. Okay, um, how do you want it to sound? Like, any direction for us? Badass. It's kind of strange for a company as big as Disney to only give one word of direction. Yeah, I think they also did give, like, you know, the songwriters, like, you know, early concept art of Elsa, so they get a feel for what the character looks like. But, yeah, it is kind of weird, isn't it? And I think it plays a lot into the fact that Disney villain songs don't tend to be all that good or memorable. I think the only villain song I know is Be Prepared, and that's because you never shut the fuck up about it. It's a and great the fact, song! And the fact they're cutting it out of, like, the new live-action version. I'm so annoyed if they actually do. But, like, can you feel the love tonight? Fucking fantastic song. I love the fact as well they brought Elton John out of retirement. Like, he said, oh, I'm done. I'm going on one last tour, then I'm fucking done. And then Disney just reversed that dump truck full of money up to his house and went, are you sure you're done? We got James Earl Jones a skeleton out of its coffin. We can get fucking you. It's like, we, Darth Vader does our fucking bidding. You're Elton John. You're going to be like, okay, I guess I'll do it. The problem was, though, that while workshopping ideas for a badass theme song for Elsa, the songwriters came to the realisation they didn't really see Elsa as a cartoonishly evil cryomancer who wanted to rain death and ice down from the heavens, but an emotionally troubled young woman with a terminal case of resting smug face. Are you sure? Because I don't think I'm supposed to... Oh. God, does that last have some resting smug face on it. It's almost impressive in a way, isn't it? Just to like come across as that fucking smug in every piece of promotional art for you. So the writers of Elsa's song yes. are now no longer seeing her as a villain. No. They're looking at her and seeing this like angsty teenage girl. Yes, and obviously to write a song from the perspective of an angsty teenage girl instead of a villain, you have to get into a different mindset. So to get into that mindset, um, according to like, you know, um, uh, Chris Nansen Lopez and Robert Lopez, what they did is just sat down and listened to a bunch of emo music. <laughs> Just on repeat, like, you know, like get into like the, the frame of mind that, you know, an angsty teenage girl would be in at that point in her life. And I'd like to think, like, come on, Brad, throw out some of those, like, you know, those angst filled emo bands. Like, I'm going to throw, like, MCR straight away. Fuck you, won't do what you tell me, killing the name off by Rage Against the Machine. Mm -hmm. The most on the nose fucking angst band ever, because it's literally called Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> What about crawling, numb? Oh yeah, Linkin Park would be definitely on there. And obviously if we're coming from the mindset of a angsty teenage girl, you've got to have some fucking Paramore on there. Hayley Williams will be speaking directly to young Elsa in some of those songs. And then obviously if you're going for female-led bands, you've got to have some Nightwish in there. Oh yeah. A bit of Evanescence. A bit of a Within Temptation. Oh fuck. <laughs> like, we basically just talked about my playlist when I was in fucking college. <laughs> but yeah, you'd have all them songs on there, wouldn't you? A bit of Avril Lavigne, if you want to go, you want to go for that, like, you want that punk, but you want that pop edge. Because you are writing a Disney song after all, aren't you? <laughs> and Avril Lavigne is probably the most relevant one because um, the songwriters would say the, li uh, the line, 
the cold never bothered me anyway. They refer to that as the song's Avril Lavigne moment. It's like they say they love the way that Elsa delivers it with such like a sarcastic, bitchy tone. The cold never bothered me anyway. And there's a great interview with like the songwriters when they're watching a load of videos of little girls doing karaoke of Let It Go. And they say that's our absolute favourite moment in the entire song because no matter who's singing it, especially when it's a, like a little girl, they just turn into bitchy little prima donnas for that line. And they spit it out of the camera with such venom, we fucking love it. We love the idea that these little girls are like, just, like really getting into this song and just like coming into their own screen, oh, fuck you, straight to camera basically. It's like, that's the best. That line, you can imagine it being delivered by a fucking drag queen, can't you? Like, the amount of just, like, bitchy sass. It needs like, to have that yeah, in it, doesn't it? Yeah, she needs to have, yeah. like, just, like, clicking her fingers in, like, all that way, and, like, ice coming out outside. Like, Daenerys Targaryen behind her going, oh, come on. It's like, that's how you do it. I love that. We have a resurgence of, like, characters like that. <laughs> So if the people writing the song no longer see Elsa as a villain, yes. then they're obviously not going to write a villain song. No, and obviously the one line direction they got from Disney is make it badass. So they interpreted that and used like the, like the broad creative freedom they've been given to instead write the song as a celebration of her newfound power and intended to be representative of the fact that Elsa is no longer hiding the power she's been forced to her entire childhood. And that idea is even directly alluded to in the final film where Elsa takes off the glove and cloak that she's been forced to wear to like hide her powers. Well, now they know. And I've seen people referencing that as some subtle thing that nobody noticed. It's like, they mention it in the film. The gloves will help. See, conceal it. Don't feel it. Don't, Don't let it show. And it's like, the, who's the, like, the dipshit guy who's trying to get Anna in the sack? Who's oh, that God, guy? Uh, he, he takes his gloves off, doesn't he, when he goes to like strangle her or whatever. It's, oh yeah. He's revealing his villainous intent by taking off his gloves. If only there was some sort of scene in the film that established that gloves were important. Like, like Elsa putting on her gloves and then taking them off in the most memorable part of the entire fucking film. As you can probably guess, the song the duo ended up writing was Let It Go. And although Disney executives positively loved it, with one producer claiming to have listened to it on repeat non-stop for seven weeks on his trip to and, to and from Disney Studios every single day, they didn't think it fit with the tone of the film. Before we continue, I just want to mention, like, that executive is a fucking baller-ass pimp because he was experiencing what every parent was going to experience immediately after the release of Frozen. Because, holy shit, did that song get a lot of play. Overplay, some might say. I hope he had his window wound down because, obviously, that film wasn't out. Oh, yeah. If he had his window wound down, he's leaning out and just, like, I'm screaming. Hoping I'm hoping as well he looks exactly like Terry Crews. I was hoping he was doing that Terry Crews moment, just, like, overly dramatically singing Let It Go in his car as people just went past going, So as we all know from the final products that hit the cinemas, mm -hmm. the song Let It Go was clearly much better than the script they'd written. Yes, because Disney decided then and there upon hearing it, no, this song's too good, we're not getting rid of it and we're not going to rework it. This is Elsa's theme song. But obviously, it's too upbeat, it's too catchy and the words don't really fit with the idea of a villain. So they rewrote her entire character, changing her from a, a heartless snow witch into a more sympathetic character little girls around the world could empathise with. Can we for a moment as well discuss how stupid the plot of Frozen is? Like, it's a good film, fantastically well animated, like that Let It Go is a brilliant song, but the idea that the king and queen would want Elsa to hide her powers when their primary export is ice. <laughs> so they say that we sell ice, don't they? They sell ice to other places and we have a little girl who's destined to one day rule our country who can make ice. Yeah, let's, let's not use that power or allow us to cultivate it in any manner. But even for the purposes of, like, military prowess, because yeah. clearly from that film, people want to take over their kingdom. They do, and no fucker anyway is going to invade the country where Sub-Zero's side piece is ruling that bitch with an iron fist. So you'd have all the kingdoms going, oh yeah, we're going to invade Arendelle with our fleet of ships, and Elsa can go, oh cool, oh, I'm just going to freeze this bit of the water, send some snow golems over to punch your ships to pieces, and then leave. Like, if you want to step to me, bring it on. The thing about ice powers is that they are broken as shit if you understand how they work. And there's a great moment in the X-Men comics where Iceman gets taken over by Emma Frost and she goes like, oh, Iceman, you're a fucking idiot. You don't make ice 
you remove energy from things and that is OP as balls. And if you do that on a mass scale, you can fundamentally shift how the world's like environment will be. You can send us into the next ice age if you want to. And so could Elsa, like, her powers are effectively infinite in like the, the scope of the world she lives in because she can change the world on a whim. So what you're saying is like the, the four horsemen of the Frozen Apocalypse would be Elsa, Elsa Iceman, Frozen, so and Susie so <laughs> The four horsemen of the ice apocalypse is Elsa, Sub Zero, Iceman from X Men, and just Frozone. <laughs> but they don't have, obviously, the, like the four horsemen's horses. Like Frozone's doing his thing when he slides, and so is Iceman. But then you've got Sub Zero, who's just riding on his dumb ice sword that he makes in one of the games. And then Elsa's just on top of like the snowman, just surfing that shit. <laughs> So realistically, the next Frozen film should just be Elsa ruling the entire fucking world from atop a 4,000 foot tall ice throne. Just with giant ice fish just punching other kingdoms into dust.